West Expansion Consolidated Drainage District is called to order for June 1st, 2017. And we'll do our invocation and we'll have Mr. Um, Ken Dawson do the invocation. Appreciate you doing that, Mr. Dawson. Uh, not a problem, sir. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you continue to bestow upon us, all the gifts you continue to give us. We give you thanks. And as we do the people business, oh God, we pray for your guidance, for your wisdom to do it well. You said, oh God, that if you want to be great in your kingdom, let you be the servant. We thank you that we are public servants and we're able to do the people business in a way that you approve. We pray, oh God, that during this hurricane season that you watch over the parish of Ascension. We pray, oh Father, during the increasing of the, these waters, oh God, that you also protect us. And we continue to give you thanks for all that you give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, Mr. Dawson, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, moving to I am roll call, Ms. Peggy. Uh, Mr. Anderson is not here, the only one. All right. Uh, item number three, accepting the minutes from May 4, 2017. All right, second, May, no more Jefferson. Minutes is approved. Agreement between West Ascension Drainage and the city of Downsonville, Mr. Bill Rue. Yes, sir, and, and you and I talked a little bit about it just to uh, recap some of the stuff. We're doing an a in, a intense study of uh, all the drain systems that we have to maintain in, in the uh, West Ascension, including our major trans I mean, um, drainage plan which includes the major channels, but we get getting cost estimates of, uh, of maintaining these structures, uh, including uh, catch basins and covers that got to be replaced, and you know, the, the whole uh, rampant of, uh, of uh, requirements that's needed for us to, to, to not only maintain, but upgrade a lot of the systems over here. And I'm recommending right now that we hold off a little bit on this uh, agreement until we get the total cost in and we can sit down and see what is the, uh, uh, can, uh, any way we can cost, uh, uh, share the cost of some of this. But again, it's hard to make these decisions until you have the actual cost in place. And we're working on that right now. Okay, Mr. Do uh, Mr. Bill. Uh, we talked briefly, and I know I talked to Mr. Ron Savoy, and I know Mr. Uh, City Councilman, uh, uh, Mr. Delaney is out there, and uh, Mr. Delaney, just to give you up to date, we we took uh, Catawba and some other streets that we're looking at with the major drains, and we see as a cost, a major cost effect that we is going to cost the drainage district. So we need to compile this and then make that presentation to the city, also the, the total cost of it, and then come up with a solution on from both part, parties. So uh, we are working on it, and uh, we're just holding back that agreement till we get some numbers like Mr. Uh, Ruth said, okay? Uh, and so, uh, when, when y'all come up with the final thing, y'all come with a committee to hold or something like that and give us an update or something? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. All right. Okay. Uh, all right, Ms. Uh, Ruth. Uh, item number five, we're going 11th Street and Highway 1 drainage issue, and that'd be Craig Anderson. Um, I guess that's uh, the railroad track. That's yeah. We uh, uh, we did complete all the debris removal on that and uh, opened up what we could. There's a section in there that you just can't get equipment in. We used inmate labors and uh, went in there and cleared it from that point to Highway 1 South. There's a, a very large culvert that is metal and deteriorated and collapsed, and it is pretty much not functioning. And uh, that is all located in the railroad right away. So I did make contact with them. I did get an email back, and there's a process we have to go through. It's kind of like the state uh, permitting process. So uh, I've made points of contact today, actually trying to get feedback on that process. I've never done it before, mm -hmm. and getting uh, direction on how to do that, and we will certainly follow through and try to get that covert removed. And then from that point, we were looking at digging the ditch on grade from the lowest point back towards the... Uh, cross drain under highway one okay so we're, we're moving forward with that it's just it's just paperwork that we have to get done all right well at least we're working on it mr bill though and do you have any questions i know you 
And some people ask a question on it. No, no, I don't have any questions at this time. Oh, okay. Thanks for the update. All right, moving to item number six, Highway 18 to Highway 3120, drainage issue update, and Mr. Ron. Right. Um, apologize for the last meeting. I wasn't here to kind of fill in. We did have that meeting. I know uh, Mr. Pierce might have still going some, but uh, out of that meeting, it was agreed that CF would purchase material uh, to change out the driveways on the north side of the Highway 18 ditches. Uh, that process, after we left the meeting, uh, both entities, the state and CF, both had a little work to do. Uh, CF had to get internal budget approval from their management to fund purchasing the material, and uh, the state had agreed that they would do the digging portion and set up the work zone and allow CF uh, contractors to use their flagging and work zone to install the pipes at the time of the project. Uh, they also got approval to dig the ditch from the cross drain just west of 18 uh, to Highway 70. That ditch was, like you say, kind of filled up, which would help some of St. Jude also, when, in addition to that dam and those culverts, that would establish that outfall back, and it goes to a different cross drain under 70 than what St. Jude discharges in. So it would, it would kind of deflect some of that water that way too. Problem is right now the river's high. They can't, they can't dig yeah. right now. But uh, I spoke with both entities yesterday on the update. Uh, Aaron is, is predicting sometime around August, maybe, before these levels get right, and then they can dig, and they plan to, once they do that, also uh, cut the shoulders down and load that soil out to where the, the shoulder of 18 is lower than the blacktop, and the water would then go into that ditch. They did do some cutting with a motor patrol, I think, to help some, but they still need to move forward with this. All right, so they're so, working on it. All right, so we're just going to leave this in here on, on the list for update, too. So once again, it's in progress working, so that's great. Um, I, I have some left over. Go ahead, Mr. Dawson. Uh, Ron, could you report, uh, we, we made the request to put the uh, no passing. Was, were you involved oh, with, uh, in that? Yeah, with Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, could you right. just report on that, please? I can sign out for that, no problem. I had received the letter. Did you didn't get a copy of the letter? Well, they denied that request. It was, I, I just wanted you to kind of report that in the uh, in the meeting. That I thought you had been or Did you get a copy of it? No. I haven't seen anything on that. And then, uh, and then. I, I don't remember getting any copy. Yeah. Well, anyway, that we you know we'd requested to to have the no passing lanes in front of where they turn into St. Jude. Right. That was on thirty one twenty. Yeah, thirty one twenty. Yeah. Right. And and they did not, the state denied that. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Oh, I'll see if I can find that. <laughs> yeah, we'll check. I, I'll, we will check with the OCD. Okay. Item number seven is uh, uh, what's the St. Jim Master Drainage Plan and Mr. Bill Rule. Again, this goes back somewhat to the uh, comments we made earlier, but it'll give you a, a little bit more information on it. We still plan on uh, doing a drainage basin at a time rotation of the, all the system, major systems in West Ascension, and this is going to be all rot again on a rotation uh, basis. I've already checked with uh, uh, the uh, Corps of Engineers. For the most part, because of what we're doing is, is the maintenance of it, we can probably get it under the 401 plan, which is a open uh, permit system, which means we don't have to go for an intense permitting of it. Uh, we just could be shaping and, uh, and, uh, and removing the, the debris and stuff from this. A lot of it, or some of it, going to be some shredding and uh, of uh, the uh, debris Mr. inside. Mr. Will. Yes, sir. Uh, we're not, not on that subject there. This is the master drainage plan in mm -hmm. the St. Jim Parish that we probably need those right of ways, 25 foot right of ways on our major. Oh, no. This is, I'm getting to that. Okay. Okay. All As right. Part of the master drainage plan is, you know, since we, we're working and we're getting to this point, one of the things that we don't have, and it, 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 it's critical to, 
to getting started on it, if in fact we put everything else together, is the right of ways. And without the right of ways, it's going to stop us on everything. Uh, so when we get to, uh, again, while we're working on everything with the anticipation to be able to get uh, signed right of ways, but again, until we, we can have all of this in place, uh, awaiting that, but if we still can't mobilize and do anything until that's in place. So it's up to the, again, the, the drain board and the, and the uh, property owners, I mean, if you go forward with the approved drainage system as being the main channels and the main basins, main uh, uh, out, uh, outfalls from the main channels, then we can go forward with that anytime you wish as far as putting it into an ordinance. Right. I, you got a question, Bill? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. We, I know you gave us a, uh, a plan on those outfall ditches and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the question here is that we, we definitely need to have a meeting with the uh, major landowners right. that most of it, those major canals go through. And, I, and, and that's what we need to uh, get this, a list of those people mm -hmm. and then send them a letter so we can have a meeting with them, with them right. first. And then we'll have a meeting with the uh, remaining public exactly. to see what is the, uh, their concern. And that's again why we want to get all our work together and, our, and justification for the need to bring these into our system and get a servitude on it because we have this work already approved and ready to go uh, to, you know, on these bayous, on these systems. But again, now we stop if we can't work, negotiate something with the landowners or go through with this uh, legal maneuver okay. of, of getting the servitudes in place. All right. We would rather get five servitudes from them instead of going with this automatic 100 foot. Negotiate and get, you know. Up to 100 foot. Up yeah. to 100 foot. Yeah. It, it's better, you know, I, we'd rather get five servitudes say, look, I'll give you 50 foot. I'll go ahead and give you 25, whatever you really need to get in there and do the work. The other reason for getting this system to get or this design together we can tell them, say for instance, if we negotiate with them, say, well, we'd rather just give you some servitude, not that much, but give you some servitude. If we have the design, we know how much we need. And that's another, we just don't want to say, well, give me such, such and such. If we have a design, we know this is what we need and this is how much we need and this is why we need it. Okay. So that's another reason to get this design together right. too. Okay. okay. Then Bill, all right, I know we've been working on this for a while. So... We should be able to meet within the next 60 days. Well, I mean, I'll have something on paper. All right. You know, to be able to sound, meet with them and say, this is what That's very reasonable. That's, that's good enough for me. 60 days. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you, Bill. All right. Item number eight, St. James Assumption Drainage Update. Mr. Uh, Pierce, Thomas Pierce. Yeah. As you know, um, it was stated uh, at one of the meetings earlier that uh, that the uh, application of the permit was withdrawn, and when we discussed with the engineer, uh, and Move, I you don't mind putting that, that mic a little bit closer, we don't in want our the public to miss uh, this information. Yeah, in our meetings uh, with the engineer, he, he was kind of questioning that, and he said that it appears that some inaccurate information was uh, conveyed to us. So um, the project is still going. Uh, the application hadn't been withdrawn. Uh, the only way it it can be completely withdrawn as if the applicant, which is St. James Parish, withdraw, withdraws the uh, application. And that didn't happen. And so uh, they're continuing with the H&H &H study and uh, everything is going forward on schedule. I think in one of his statements, uh, I provided or submitted that to y'all earlier, uh, at the bottom of almost page two, he said that uh, the H&H &H analysis uh, is scheduled to be complete and submitted to the core at the end of June. I, earlier he gave us a, a July, mid-July, so I guess uh, that's a little bit better. Uh, in addition to that, uh, St. James, he's saying that St. James will, uh, will incur some additional costs beyond the H&H &H &H permit to revise the permit drawings and continue seeking the permit approval. And he said, I can't speak for the St. James, but uh, it is their desire to keep the permit as 
he believes it is that desire to keep the permit moving, and uh, the, despite that they're not the, the large beneficiary of the, of the project. Uh, it goes on to say that uh, uh, before the permit is issued, we would have to uh, mitigate um, wet, uh, wetlands mitigation would be uh, needed uh, via contracting with a, a, a wetland mit mitigation bank. And he, he said it's a wild guess, but he estimates that a cost between 175 to $300,000. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, the, he would have to dredge 96, 97,000 cubic yards of material in uh, and obviously there's a cost with that associated with that. So he is uh, saying that if we can't get any in-house help, maybe through uh, one of the other governmental agencies, that uh, contract there he estimates to go to about 250 to $500,000 uh, in moving that. So uh, everything has gone along as scheduled and uh, you were in the meeting, so and I'm trying to see if I can get him here and maybe maybe at the next, one of the future meetings, you know, so he can give us a right. update. So that's it. Mr. Jones. Oh, Mr. Pierce, can I asked specifically in there to get a response from the core, and I don't see that. No, in in the uh, in this in this uh, I don't see anywhere where he's helped to the core about this, about the letter. No, he's just taking information and, and giving us a history of it. Well, I think, uh, you know, if I remember, I said two or three times that, you know, it's what the court says is what counts, is not what this engineer said. Right, right. So we don't have any, we don't have a response from the court saying why they said that? No, he didn't, he didn't provide that. He didn't provide that. And, uh, I can, I can tell him to give, to well, give I told him, like, Three times in that meeting. Uh, well, I can reiterate that point. Tell him to give us a response from the core. Yeah. Okay. I'll give him. I'll give him that. Uh, <coughs> that request. Or oh, I'll re restate the point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pierce, did. Um, I know what he said with St. James everything, but you had you had opportunity to talk to anyone in St. James regarding where we at on this here also? No, I talked to the president a couple of weeks ago and I'm gonna try to schedule something with him next week um, yeah. to see about uh, possibly the mitigation that we had discussed in that meeting. All right, if, if it's all can partner, all possible, can you and Bill, when Bill is scheduling his, his uh, talk to the parish press, can you both get in that same meeting and talk about these issues if we can work out something where we all be on the same page on this thing no with problem. the full full on our end emergency um, move some debris I appreciate that all right Bill you got any more questions so I want to uh, like these photos that we're gonna discuss that at any time or what it's um, yeah that's gonna be Mr. Ron down there Mr. Ron uh, Savoy took uh, 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 ride down uh, Bayou Napoleon or Bayou Le, uh, uh, Florette. So, uh, Ron, you don't mind talk, giving a little update on your trip down Bayou Napoleon? Sure. Um, I know the last meeting was right after a pretty heavy rain event, and you had a lot of residents come in and express their concern about flooding, and best way to do that is find out what's what's the problem where is it at so i went and got the addresses from mr craig where those residents lived at and i traced it out from their home to the exit of ascension napoleon is pretty well clean they had a few obstructions you know from back of town on on downstream but they removed that and then we went to highway 70 and it is extremely uh, blocked from 70 to bayou Verret. Um, everything from natural trees growing sideways in line with the water level and, and debris catching on that and then 
trees all the way across it to vegetation growing and several debris piles all the way across the canal and uh, way on the low end there's a rail car bridge that's about a foot off the water uh, if the water comes up it'll hit head into the side of that bridge um, other than that I mean it's just it's a lot of obstructions in there uh, so I got some photos you all have packets of that and um, that is an assumption and St. James it's from Highway 70 going downstream and then Bayou Verrett, I hit that and came back up to Highway 3127, I believe it was. And there are two large culverts under 3127 that are bringing the water out of Verrett. Uh, and one of those is, has a large silt deposit in front of it. So that's a plug it's there. Uh, other than that, Verrett didn't seem too bad. That, that's where your water flow was. You had a pretty steady water, water flow in Verrett and then Napoleon had almost zero. So uh, that's my findings on that. It wasn't a whole lot in Ascension that was blocked. It was a lot of downstream in. Mm. Can I, we have these photos? Um, can we put these in a minute? Yeah. Um, you know, electronically, can you share? I guess Peggy, can you attach these to the minute? Oh, I can email them to you. Yeah, that's okay. not a problem. Uh, Mr. D Mr. Bill. Moore. Yes, sir. Uh, Cody Barton is our attorney for the East Assistant Drainage District. He's also the attorney for St. James now. And I briefly uh, mentioned it to him, and he was on his way to St. James for the meeting. He talked to, to the uh, parish president over there, and uh, the parish president is real receptive to us meeting and talking about it. Uh, if they can't mobilize to, to help out, and we are, again, we can work something out. And that's the meeting you we were talking about a second ago that Mr. Pierce and I can meet with him maybe and take care of both at one time. Yeah, I appreciate that. And just uh, after uh, Ron, I, I went there and put a, a med, uh, I guess a measuring stick on how much water fell eight days mm -hmm. after the, that rain. That rain we had about nine inches of rain. Mm -hmm. It took eight days for it to drop a foot. Mm -hmm. And that water's just being held up here. And, uh, and Ron went eight days, and, and like you say, he can walk across the canal. He can drag a boat across the canal. So, I mean, we know we have serious issues with it, but once again, just the public know, from Ascension Parish, drainage board here, we're doing everything possible we can. And unfortunately, we have to work with other parish. And that's why our dilemma, mm -hmm. you know. And this is a, on an emergency basis when it's clogged like this, it's non-permitted uh, work. I mean, all we have to do is notify and go in and do it because, again, you're removing an emergency a blockage caused by the, by the uh, floods or by the drainage uh, system and everything. So it's not a, a permit issue and you're removing those blockages. The other part is we're actually removing fill, removing dirt. So there should be an issue. We just have to work it out and uh, who's going to do it and when. Okay. So how does that work uh, legally? We have to have a CEA with, with them, or do we have any do we have it, any rights of way to? We need some something on paper saying uh, giving us permission to enter their parish. If we if they say yeah, if if y'all can come do it better, come on. You know, just a, a, a simple uh, email can is, is, uh, is sufficient. Uh, but a uh, 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 maybe a little bit one page letter is all we really need. It's very very easy you know, for the parish president to, uh, to give us the right to come in and do it. Uh, Mr. O'Neill. Oh, um. <laughs> well, that... Exactly, and uh, but the, 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 the St. James, the, Mer the par parish president said they're gonna t they would take care of any permission to get into it and stuff like that. So that has to be attached, but I'm talking about the the agreement just between us and them, yeah. giving us okay to enter that parish and, and do the work is very simple. They'll take care of any other uh, right of ways we need or, or agreements that to enter the property to get to it is, is their responsibility. Okay. All right. Mr. Dawson, any more? No. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you. And then uh, once again, uh, uh, Mr. Dawson said make sure these are uh, uh, submitted in the minute. I'll get that to Mr. Peggy, no problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, item nine drainage issue along Highway One uh, North. That's me. Um, I'm 
still getting with the State Department to have that public meeting so they can address that with the public. So, once again. Um, moving on to item number 10, and that's the drainage issue between the Fernandez, Fernandez Drive and Cotton Drive. Ron, we got an update the last time that the, um, Fernandez uh, didn't want it. If there's any certain reason why or not. Uh, yeah, uh, I was excited. I had found another route. Maybe this might will work without taking out large oak trees. And uh -huh. Several live oaks and tree surgeons and things would have been involved. Uh, I don't think he realized that maybe that, that uh, sewer discharge water would be going across his property. And uh, I went over, I was calling him to meet with him to actually get the right away. And uh, he just reconsidered and said, look, right now I'm just, I'm not, I'm not in, in favor of this. So he and his brother decided to just back out. So that, that kills that project for his no right away. We don't have a route for that water to get out. Okay, well, I mean, when it did everything we possibly can, I would remove this, and if they come back to us, uh, we'll put it back on. And we'll agenda. certainly keep up the existing ditch with inmate labor. There's about as much as we can do with it. We will certainly keep it cut and sprayed and raked out. All right. Um, Ms. Peg, you can take that one off. Ms. Peg. Item number 11, Catawba Street drainage update, Ron. Okay, yeah, y'all been talking about this and a little history on it. Looks like it goes way back, but survey came back. There's definitely recommendations from the engineering department to increase culvert sizes from, um, I think there's existing like 15 inch, 16 inch culverts along Catawba going to 24 inch and 30 inch. So it's definitely undersized. Uh, but to do this job according to that design, it would be a two-phase project. One would require permitting through the state. First thing that the engineer found was the cross drain under Highway 1 North, he says, needs to be increased, uh, the capacity of it. Um, that would involve jacking and boarding the other culvert. So a guy with Aaron Ellisar with the state to find out who they use to do that. Uh, I got a verbal quote from the guy. Uh, if we do it and pay for it, or the city or whomever funds that, would it would be a budget number of 30,000 just to bore under that highway. But we still could move forward with the digging of the ditch and changing out all the culverts and move on with that and then increase that capacity at a later date. But um, it's looking at a rate of about $200,000 total, about 160,000 along the city road. and. I think roughly uh, 35, 36,000 along the state highway. So, uh, correct. Well, and, and once again, these are numbers that we need to know, and I, uh, we're going to be asking Ron to do more projects like this. And I think next next item on there is going to be one of those items, right? Right. right. So, uh, Bill, you got a question on that? Well, I mean, it just brings up the question that we have all, we have Bill Rue here and, and Ron and, and Mr. Pierce and, you know, how does the, how does this, how does the administration of this, how do they handle these things that come up that have, you know, these costs under $200,000 extra? West Country Drainage has an income of, of $800,000. So how are those priorities established? First of all, we have to you know, just, uh, determine exactly where it is. If it's totally uh, in, the, in the parish and under the control of uh, West Central Drainage or East Central Drainage, that's one, number one. Number two is if it's not that and if it's uh, it within the city limits or partially within the city limits, uh, the, what we do is work out a, a cooperative or intergovernmental agreement for cost sharing for the most part. And then we determine if that's possible, then you determine if you can actually afford your end or if the, the other entity or city can afford their end. And if you agree that both can, then you go forward and you contract it out and you do it. Basically, that's how it works. But so, I mean, we're looking at, we, we just go down this list. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many items. We have a dozen or so items here, and some of them are, are very expensive. And mm -hmm. I don't even know that we've identified all of them on here. So. You know, how is the prioritization of these work requests, or how does that 
you know, how, how do we handle that? In a lot of cases, if it, if it take, if, it, the, if the issue is undersized culverts, and mostly has a, the issue is uh, frontages. Uh, a frontage normally is considered a, a perk, okay? It's not something necessary to drainage. And the way we usually act, you know, what, in whatever case, if it's just a frontage, we say we're going to take it up and have open ditch. If the entity, be it the city, be it the, the person, people living there, say, no, 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 I want it covered, well, then our decision is if you want it covered, you pay for that portion. Otherwise, we remove the culverts that's inhibiting the drainage. We have an open ditch, and, and that's basically, and we pay for that. I mean, I'm just wondering in general, how do we get, we establish these priorities for these things, especially the ones that, you know, at this point in time, we might not even have the money to do. So when the Pierce is talking about something there and by Napoleon, that's two hundred, three hundred thousand right. dollars $300,000, we're talking about, you know, $100,000 going to the road here. Those are just two of the items on this list of 12. So how do we get those, uh, how, do we, how do we establish those priorities? I mean, obviously we have $800,000 and mm -hmm. thereabouts that, that we spend. So, you know, what, what, uh, what do we use to, to know that we're spending that money the best way that we can because we can't fix all these right. things in, in a year? Structural flooding is number one, uh, and, and facility flooding is number two and which is your roads and stuff like this where you can't pass or damaging your roads. But structural flooding is the number one priority. Uh, so if, uh, if, one, if one event, say a, a five-year event, is going to cause major uh, or substantial structural flooding on this one project, and the other one, it takes a 10-year event to cause significant structural flooding, where you go with the, the most immediate one, which is the one with the lower event is going to cause damage. And basically, and then we work it from there. Now, if both arms equal, then we go into how much structural damage, how much problem each cost. We go with a benefit cost, uh, you know, analysis of it to determine which one is more warranted. And that's, that's basically how we work it. So I guess at some point, maybe, you know, I'd like to sit down. I don't know, maybe uh, Councilman Joseph mm -hmm. also and and let's look at where, where we are with this and, and what our priorities mm -hmm. are and what. We can do a, a real preliminary benefit cost uh, of each, you know, uh, of, of the d two different um, projects. And I think that's where we need when we go with the, uh, what's the same thing, the city of Downsonville right now, Bill, um, from, from the cost estimate, we, we're trying to gather those down there. I guess we're going to get more items on this list as we go, but at the end of the day, that list is going to be evaluated with the city mm -hmm. and us, and if in my mind, if we don't have the funding for it, then once again, if the project's got to be funded, we're going to have to go to the public and ask mm -hmm. them, do they want these projects funded, or the flooding would be, I mean, I'm sorry, it just, it's all about funding. If we're going to upgrade the drainage system, somebody got to pay for it. And we always try to, like I say, when we, when we talk about the cost of upgrade, we call, we, what, will, what will immediately benefit the situation, and in that case, open ditch, you know, if, if in the case of the Catawba and stuff like this. And then anything above that, aesthetically, is over and above what is figured into the, up, the, to the basic benefit cost analysis. So I mean, it's just a cost plus on that. Uh. Um, as of right now, we have a cost analysis, and we've done this. We don't need no more update. We're just going to have to out max and remove this one for right now. And, and, and but Ron, is there any other little work that we can do to try to eliminate the drainage right now that you see? You know, the, I, I uh, mean, I know the the funeral home is constantly being. Or you can't redirect the water to go somewhere else or nothing like that? No, the, the survey's been showed you that the culverts are the problem. The undersized pipe is the problem. Now, we did go out there reactive uh, 
I think it's Ninth Street in the front of the funeral home. Mm -hmm. They had some plugage right there, you know, just obvious. Right. And they done done that. They opened that area up, but that's the extent of what you can do unless you do something to the, the line of pipe. Okay. Well, there's also a problem flooding across on the other side of, of Highway 1. So on the the, uh, the railroad side of, right. of Highway 1, that's presumably that's not a culvert problem. That's something else. Well, that you have that culvert on the, the low end of Highway 1 that is collapsed. Uh, that we're trying to get permitted on that other agenda item. Uh, next to the railroad. Oh, yeah, it's right. That's the discharge yeah. of that end of Bayou Lafouche. Right. And uh, I think if we remove that, that'll help that out a, a good bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, moving item number 12, we do have a speaker, Mr. Melvin Davis, on, on Bonnie Land. Mr. Davis? Yes, uh, I've spoken to Councilman Joseph, Mayor Sullivan, and Mr. Anderson. We have a culvert that's located on Bonnie, heading towards Catalpa Street. At the very end of that culvert, it's completely collapsed, and it's, the water can only go in one direction. What I want to know is, where do we stand with this? Um. I'm going to revert that to Ron down there, Mr. Davis, because uh, uh, he's pretty much familiar with that project, too. Okay. Yeah, uh, kind of like you and I, we spoke earlier. Uh, I went out and evaluated, and the culvert on Bonnie is definitely a problem. But at the last meeting, you had several residents come in about water almost getting back in their homes. So we went and looked at the, the overall neighborhood of that area. It was four addresses, and they were all on the same city block. So what was all common to them was, again, small pipes and, and infrastructure along the road in the city limits. Uh, so we're going to attack that the same way we did Catawba and put a dollar on it. Uh, it, it. It is more than just Bonnie Lane right there. It is probably six or seven streets. And they have several houses in there that actually had water in them and almost got water again. I think we had a nine-inch rain two or three weeks ago. And uh, we are surveying that currently, and we're going to apply the same thing to, to that neighborhood and put a dollar on it and, and bring it to you all. And all hopefully, right. through this agreement with the city, come to some sort of conclusion to resolve it. All right, Ms. Davis, once again, we, we're going to update you as much as we know about it. Uh, okay. As right now, like I said, we are surveying. We're doing more than we did before, so we are actually know what we have to put in the ground and, and let the community know what needs to be done over there. Okay. I appreciate it if you would speed it up because I got flooded in last year in August and here again in April I had a little seepage again. And I mean, it's it cost of you. I, I do understand and once again that's what Mr. Bill Dawson was talking about, how we prioritize this here. And okay. that's, that's going to be a big issue among us in the community. Okay. All sir, right. All right. Thank if, you. if you don't mind, sir, what, what's your address so I can make sure that the, the engineers get his... Okay. Uh, 514 Bonnie. I think they have that, but I, I want to make sure that's included in there, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving to item number 13, St. Jude Subdivision Drainage Issue Update. Mr. Dawson. Um, you know, I just want to compliment the... Uh, Public Works Department, Drainage Department, Ron, in, in particular, that you know we've made a lot of difference in, in uh, that part of, of uh, West Central, yes, and apparently you know the, the residents see that. You know, I see we got some St. Jude people here, but they, you know, we we've seen some improvements in the drainage, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to do that. But I do appreciate that effort, and I think we addressed a lot of these things. Highway 18, Highway 3120, all of these are a result of you know, came from input from the, uh, people in that area. So uh, I would say, you know, for right now, we can take the take, take the St. Jude drainage issue off of the um, off the agenda, but we'll leave the Highway 18 and 3120 on there and and continue to ad address those. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, moving on. I remember uh, 14, Ron. Uh, you have any update with supervising? What's, uh, uh, no, I think we covered it. Uh, Craig had a little report, but uh, unfortunately he's ill, so 
Okay. Uh, everything's moving on as planned. Uh, we do have one thing for the city. Uh, we are going to be, with all those wet conditions, we're making sandbags for the hurricane season. We are going to restock uh, that can at the old DPW, and we also are going to fill up a can uh, that the city will have access to. Okay. So uh, that will be available to the public. And Ron, um, since you say that the public, uh, when we do have a major rain event, they, they can go there and get yes, their sir. own sandbag. That is what that is for, yes, sir. That's right. Okay, because uh, I know a lot of people say, well, they, you, you can't get it. No. But, no, no, rain no doubt. Rain right there, you, you can go, go there it. and pick it up, go in the container, get how many you need, yes, and sir. Uh, move on. All right. Anything else, Mr. Brown? All right. Uh, Mr. Craig Anderson, not here. Mr. Thomas Pierce. Good. Good. All right. Ms. Peggy, we moving on uh, number 15, date time of the next meeting. Huh? July 6th. July 6th. All right. Move to adjourn. I second it. Meeting adjourned.